Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about enjoining the longitudinals for my plywood composite boat and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. In this video, we're primarily going to focus on the technique for edge joining bits of plywood. The longitudinals for this boat are longer than a single sheet of ply, so you need to cut them out of a couple and join them before you can install them. Before we get started though, I've got another viewer t-shirt photo. This one here is Butch from Baltimore in the US, so thanks Butch, appreciate you sending that in. While we're here, I'd also like to say thanks to Tony Rich from Tasmania, who also sent me a whole lot of OMC service manual information, which is awesome, so thank you very much for that too. All right, let's have a look at the bits and pieces we've got, and then I'll show you how I'm gonna join them. So here are all the longitudinals, and they need joining along these edges. There's a few different ways you can edge join timber like this. So we'll talk a bit about the few different techniques and the way people traditionally did it, then I'll show you how we're gonna do it. Now, the obvious thing you can do is take two bits of ply like this, put a bit of glue in here, and you can't kind of done. But it's not very strong. You don't have a very big surface area for the glue to adhere to. To combat this, what people did in the past was called scarfing. So you would take a piece of timber, we'll draw it a little bit bigger, and then you would cut it at an angle like this, and then you'd do the same thing on the other side, and then you would glue in this section here. And what that did was give you a much larger surface area for the glue to adhere to. So often this distance here would be, you know, up to sort of like 12 times the thickness of the timber. Scarfing's a really great way to go. It's a little bit tricky because you've got to cut these angles very precisely. And, you know, it takes a fair bit of work. But if you're gluing only, then it's kind of your only option. But what we're going to do is take our bits of timber we're going to bevel them slightly, like this. In the middle here, we are going to just put epoxy, a bit like this sort of first idea. And then, in this whole section, we're going to put bits of fiberglass. So the idea here is this bevel spans, sort of say, you know, 7 to 10 centimetres either side of the join. We're going to do this fiberglass while the glue in here is still wet too, so we end up with a bit of a chemical bond across the whole thing, and quite a strong joint. Because I've heard there is a skeptic on the internet somewhere, I'm going to make a spare one out of some scrap plywood, and in a future video, once it's fully dried, we're going to put that in the press and test it to failure and see how strong it is. There's a few different ways you can cut the bevels out of this plywood. You could simply use a chisel, fine but slow. I think you could probably use an electric plane or even a hand plane, but I'm gonna have a shot with a router. I had an old router that I found finally, a friend actually had it, he gave it back, and it was quite rusty. I've cleaned it up a bit, but I couldn't get a new bit for it. I couldn't get one that had the right shank size. So we're actually running with an old bit. So I'm gonna test it on the scrap timber first, A, to get the depth, and B, just to see whether it's sharp enough to do the job. And then we'll use that scrap to actually make our test one anyway. So we'll start with that. This is the router I'm using, reasonably large, I guess. By adjusting the threaded rod here, I've set the depth to be, you know, yay deep, so not much. The idea is you're taking a single layer of plywood off each side. So plywood in this case, what have we got? This plywood looks to be six ply. I always thought plywood had an odd number, a centre ply, but mm, doesn't seem to. But what we're looking to do is just take the very outer section off each one. It's not critical, we could probably take a little bit more off, but Really what we're looking at is getting it so that by the time we glass on top of it, it's still reasonably flush. So I'll experiment with the depth I've got this router cut to at the moment, and we'll adjust as necessary. Looks like we're pretty much spot on with that depth for the top layer of ply. I'm almost tempted to go a little bit deeper just because of the thickness of the fiberglass I'm using to keep it flush. So I might just set it a tiny fraction deeper. I think I might run with that slightly deeper cut, just because I think that's closer to the thickness that the fiberglass is gonna be. Also, by going a little bit into the bottom layer, I'm getting past this glue layer and having some timber for the epoxy to soak into. 
So we'll mark it out and we'll use this one to do first. I'm gonna bevel back each bit of ply 75 millimeters. Then you'll have a distance from the edge of the bit to the edge of the router. And that's how far I'm gonna move back the speed square so that I can use it as my guide to get a straight cut along that edge. It'd be nice to clamp this speed square or a batten down, but I think I'm just gonna put my foot on it. We'll run that first cut across. So that's all right, pretty happy with how straight that is. I think it moved a little bit at the end, but it's fine. The ones I actually saw in the training videos for these were quite wobbly because at the end of the day, you're putting cut fiberglass into it, you're epoxying it. It actually doesn't need to be perfect. This isn't joinery. We're not putting these together so they must make perfectly. We're just making a space. Now I can pretty much freehand the rest of it. Now I've thought about it, what I'll do is I'll actually put this piece here which will support the edge of the router and stop it from cutting too deep. You can also probably see here it's a little bit burnt and this is a sign of the router bit being blunt. Unfortunately I can't get a new one yet, I can probably get one online, but it's doing a decent job. Now I'll do the same, 75 centimetres on the other side. Obviously when you're putting your square on you need to be mindful that both sides of these aren't actually square to the edge, 90 degree. In the case of the pieces I'm doing here, one edge is flat, the other is a curve. All right, there we go. Both beveled and ready to do our join. You can see here, this is actually curving off the ground. As the moisture in the plywood varies, you do tend to get a bit of a curve in it. So we we'll definitely have to weight it down when we do our join. What I'm going to do now is cut out some bits of fiberglass that are the right size for that rebate. That way it's all ready to go. When we mix the epoxy, we don't want to have this extra sort of delay. We want to be ready to go. So we'll go and cut those out first. I finally got around to hanging up the roll of fiberglass that I bought. It's pretty heavy and it's pretty awkward on the ground. So I figure this way it's just there. I can pull sheets down as I need them, roll it back up. What I'm going to do is just cut some long thin strips off. We need strips that are 15 centimetres long. So what I might actually do is just cut a bit of a sheet off. That way we can mark it and cut it on the ground. There'll always be a little bit of wastage because of the excess, but I can live with that. The fibreglass we're using for this boat build is a double bias. So it's a double weave that goes, I think it's 90 degrees, and it's 450 grams per square metre. All right, let's mark it up for these strips and we'll cut those out. Now I'm just going to mark this strip to the width of the plank. This is our patch cut out now. It's actually a little bit thinner than I thought. So this is our test piece. When I do the real planks over here, I might actually set the router a little bit shallower again, just so it doesn't dip down. Also obviously means we keep as much timber as possible, so it's definitely worth doing this experiment one first. I've routed out all the actual longitudinals now. Next thing I do is just cut a bit of this builder's plastic and put it underneath the join on each of them. That way when we epoxy it, it won't stick to the floor. I'm just gonna cut up some small squares, just big enough to go underneath the joint. Next I'm going to cut a square of fiberglass for each one, then we'll mix up the epoxy. Since I last did the budget on the board, I've bought 20 litres of West System 105 epoxy. I was reading the Goujon Brothers book on boat building and they're the same guys that make the West System. So I figured that's what I'd go with. It's a really good book. I've really been enjoying reading it. They've obviously got, you know, an incredible amount of experience. And this particular epoxy was very much formulated for this job. So I figure why go with anything else? In Australia, this set me back about $740, so it's pretty expensive. So big thanks to everyone who signed up to the Patreon account. It really did help pay for this very directly, as well as people who made some direct PayPal donations. So thank you very much for that. First step here then is just to put the taps. The great thing about this is it comes with some taps that meter in the correct proportions. So by simply doing five pumps of one, five pumps of the other, you get your exact one to five ratio you need. 
So we'll put the taps in, we'll sort of bleed them so they've got a good solid pump so we're getting the right amount. What we're gonna do after that is add some caviseal beads to bring the epoxy from a resin, a glassing resin, up to a glue consistency. The other thing I like about West System stuff is everything's just got this three digit number. So the pumps here are 301, so it just makes ordering stuff really simple. I like the fact they've just kept it so straightforward. The pumps come with two extensions that go on them, the larger one for the resin, the smaller one for the hardener. Taps are in now. It actually took quite a bit of force to get the larger one onto the resin pump far enough that I can get the tap in without the extension hitting the bottom of the container. So just something to be aware of. All right, now I'm just gonna use a container and just pump them both until I get no air coming out and just a full load of resin and hardener. You waste a little bit, but I'd rather do that and not have those little air shots coming out when I'm trying to measure the correct ratio. This epoxy is mixed in a ratio of five parts resin to one part hardener. And if we just do one pump on each, that gives us the right ratio. One of the other tips they say when mixing this is rather than doing five on one, then five on the other, if you do them one at a time, if you lose count, you've still got the right ratio, even if you did four or six pumps. It's also good to give the pump the time just to come up on its own, don't pull it up. And that's sort of something else you get by doing alternating pumps on them. This first lot of epoxy we're gonna be using as a glue rather than a resin. So we're gonna add those cabosil, the little glass beads. It says to mix the epoxy really thoroughly before you add the cabosil. Don't sort of try and mix all three components together at once. Out of interest, I also went the 206 hardener, which is the slow hardener, because it's still pretty hot here at the moment. Starting to cool off, but because I'm a bit of a beginner at this and it's warm, I wanted the slightly longer working time. I think maybe if you're more experienced, you could get things done more quickly and you wouldn't worry about having a faster hardener, but I figured this would just give me more time. I couldn't find anything to scoop it with, so I'm just gonna use Arne's coffee mug. If you could remind me to tell him before he uses it next, that'd be awesome. That's what they look like. Can't really tip it up enough, but just a really, really fine powder. All right, still too runny, just add a bit more. I could just tell them it's powdered milk and see what happens. I think I might wear a dust mask in the future when doing this. These little beads, they do sort of get airborne really easily when you first pour them in. Once you get mixing, it's fine because they're wet, but the first time you scoop it in, they sort of go everywhere and I can't imagine they're very good to breathe. All right, I still think it's a little bit runny because we need to put this on the edge of the timber. So we don't really want it to be pourable. We want it to be something that when we stick it on, it'll actually stay in position. There's a whole lot of uh, sort of references for how thick things are. I think really the thickest they talk about is like a peanut butter consistency. And then below that, they're looking at a bit of a jelly consistency and that's the one we're going for today. So this is what we've got now. You can see it's much more a sort of glue consistency where it's actually staying on the paddle. I might've actually gone slightly past jelly into the peanut butter territory, but it'll do. So I'll just keep stirring this a bit more and we'll go and put it on before it goes off. So this is just a little trial one first. So I'll put our patch aside. And then I'm just gonna run it along one edge. And we'll press them together. And then I'll just wipe off the excess. As I do each one, I'm just gonna confirm I've got them straight. The butt joins here are mostly factory edges, so I'm expecting them to be pretty square to these edges, but it's worth double checking that because once it's locked in, it's locked in. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing to all the longitudinals, and then we'll go and mix up the resin to do the fiberglass patch. As I'm gluing these up, there's a few voids, look like knots in the timber that have been uncovered when I did the routing. 
So I'm going to use this cabasil mixture just to fill those before I do the glassing on top. Occasionally where I've slipped with the router as well there might be a little gouge. So I may as well fill that too with just a skim. That's how much glue I've got left so not much. I think we had the amount just about right. I've now got the glue in the join. I've given it a bit of a skim because when you scrape the glue obviously it oozes up and I've smoothed it out. I decided to actually just smear it all over this section because it'll help stick the patch down for one. Maybe it's a good idea, maybe it's a bad idea, we'll see. I'm going to go around now and stick them all on quickly before the glue goes off but while I'm mixing up the resin I'll have a little bit of a talk about the theory behind this. I've put a heavy weight on the end of each longitudinal to make sure that the plywood's not curling up where the join is. A little bit of excess fiberglass in a few places but we can trim that up once the resin's gone off. A while ago when I was speaking to Mark Baldage, the designer of this boat, I was saying look I've got this epoxy glue, I was thinking I'd use that glue on the join and then use this resin on the top. And he said look you can't really do that because the other glues are 3 to 1 mixture and this is a 5 to 1. So one of the reasons I was quite comfortable now of getting this glue all over the timber is it's essentially made from this resin, just thickened. On top of that, when I've been reading about wetting out fiberglass, some people really advocate putting resin on the timber first so it soaks into the grain, then putting the glass on, then wetting it out again on top. Some people say no, some people say yes. To me though it does make sense that if you have a bit of resin, it comes through the glass onto the timber, the grain sucks it away and you end up with dry join between the glass and the timber, obviously that's a bad thing. For that reason, I feel that having this glue that's compatible with the resin, it's the same thing, it should make the best join possible. It's certainly what I'm going to do, we'll see. So now I'm just going to make up another pot of pure resin, none of the cabasil beads in it, and then we'll get a brush and we'll brush it on until the glass goes clear and we know it's soaked right through. I have absolutely no idea how much this glass matting is going to soak up the resin, so I'll make a reasonably small bit to start with. If we need to make more, so be it. I think it's also better if it takes me a while to get it wetted out properly. I don't want the resin going off in the pot, so I think making small amounts is a good way to go. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but I'm wearing gloves because you can get a skin irritation from epoxy, like an eczema type thing, and with repeated exposure you can just get more sensitive, so I figure I'll just use them from day one. So you can see, even with the glue under it, the fibreglass is still quite white. So we're just going to brush this resin on. And you'll see that as the resin soaks into the glass, it starts to become quite clear. And anywhere you can see it's still white is a really good clue that you need to get more resin into that section. So in that sense it actually makes it quite easy to get the coating complete. Then once I've done that, I've got a roller like this. Hopefully you can see that, I can't see the viewfinder at the moment, so hopefully it's clear, but I'm going to use a roller like this now to roll out any air bubbles. And that way any air trapped under the fibreglass gets pushed out and the resin gets pushed down and through. And that's pretty much the procedure that I'm going to do to all of them. The fibreglass that hangs over the edge I'm trying to keep reasonably free of resin just to make it easier to cut off afterwards. I think the glue underneath also stops the fibreglass from moving around when you're painting the resin on top. Unless anyone tells me a really good reason not to do it I think I'll continue doing that. It makes it a bit easier I think. Alright they're all done now. I think it went pretty well. It certainly didn't feel problematic in any way. It all felt like it went pretty smoothly so that's encouraging. What I'm going to do now quickly though, before it dries, is I'm just going to use a bit of acetone to clean this roller up. The brush I think I'll consider disposable. The container I'm not going to throw away, I've got a funny feeling that when that epoxy sets, I might be able to kind of crack it out of the container and reuse it, so we'll see how that goes. 
but in the meantime I'll just clean this roller with a little bit of acetone. Well, I've got to say I'm pretty encouraged by today. I had been dragging my heels on this project a little bit. I think psychologically, because it came to the stage of gluing things, maybe I just got commitment issues, I don't know. Cutting seemed fine. The moment it came to actually getting the epoxy out and doing it, I don't know, I had a bit of a mental block, I think. But I figure it's gone really well. The cabosil worked really well as a glue. I had a little bit of a reservation about that as well. Was I going to get the consistency I wanted? The one time I'd done in the past, it went off really fast. Maybe I had the wrong ratio, it was a different epoxy. So, using the slow hardener, uh, what's the temperature today? I don't know, it's actually raining outside now, but... The temperature's dropped a bit over the last few days. It's now 21 degrees, so it's not hot, but it's not cold either. And I found that slow hardener worked really well. I could feel it just starting to sort of get a little bit thicker towards the end of the job, but that's almost perfect. I'm gonna let those dry for a few days now then we flip them over and then all we need to do is hopefully peel that plastic off and then just put another patch and more resin so we don't do the gluing again we just do the patch and the resin on the other side then they should be done i'll do that job over the coming week and the next time we pick up this project we'll be installing those longitudinals onto the boat all right well thanks for watching i hope you enjoyed this is my first boat build ever so if you've got any comments suggestions tips tricks i'd love to hear them all right i'll catch you soon see ya Thank you.